All right, if we go back to the request uh, documentation, you'll see that when you do a request, the get, it, the R contains the status code, headers, JSON text, and all kinds of other stuff. All we're interested in is the JSON response, which is uh, the actual contents of the, of the weather you know, report that's sent back to us. So here in our app, we've printed just R.JSON but R still contains all the other information. So we basically want to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is take this .json and move it up here. What that does is this tells Python, once you get the response from Weather Underground, only save the JSON part of that into R. And so now when we run this script, we get just the observations that we're looking for. And I can actually show you, if we copy this, go to our browser and paste that in. All right, it starts here, current observation. And that's what we're looking for. So we get rid of this other stuff and anything else we don't need. So now we're able to try to find just little like pieces of information. So. I would like to find the temperature and maybe the wind speed, which is wind and pH, or kilometers, you know, depends on where you are, but we'll do Fahrenheit here in the US and uh, mile per hour. So the way this works is currently we're at this level, current observations, okay? So that's where our data begins. That's the JSON response that we're, we're gonna go through. This is able to be called in uh, Python by name, by actually by what it, its name is, and that's called a key. Anytime you see these curly braces, stuff that's inside of that can be called by the name. Okay, so what I can do is if I don't want this stuff here, I just want the contents of this. So I'm gonna go down a level into the actual contents. I can put current observation in the print, the print command here and put current observation. And when I run this, you'll notice that the current observation and all the other stuff is gone. It just it's giving us the actual contents inside these curly braces, okay? All the way down to this curly brace, which, which encapsulates this one, okay? So it's called a dictionary. So anything in a dictionary can be referenced by the key, which is the left half of uh, this colon. And inside uh, the current observations, it's a dictionary of other stuff, okay? So because we see the curly braces again, anything in here that's got, uh, you know, a key, then a value, we can reference it that way. So if we go down and we see that uh, wind, or excuse me, temperature Fahrenheit is an entry in the current observations, or current observations dictionary, okay? It's one of those values in there. And you can know that because it's lined up cleanly underneath. So this is a dictionary, okay? It's in the curly braces. So we can reference any of these by their actual name. So we can go in and add temp F as another level here. And there you go. So what we've done is we've taken the API response, scraped out the JSON contents and saved it into a variable called R. And then we've navigated through the levels, you know, down to the actual data that we want by using the dictionary key. So current observation temp. So you can see, okay, so we're in the JSON. We're going to navigate down to current observation, and then we're going to navigate one more level deep uh, to temperature F. And we could make uh, wind MPH. We could copy this. And because the wind is in the same dictionary as current observation, we can just change this, right? 
All right, so one mile per hour wind, 61.7 Fahrenheit in San Francisco, California at this very moment. This is real time data. Now what I would like to do is find a way to get some historical data. Uh, what I want is a series of data points. You know, just having one, if you had a, an app where you just wanted to run and see the current temperature somewhere, this would work just fine. But I want to get some data that we can maybe make a spreadsheet out of, a chart of some sort. So if we go back to the Weather Underground documentation and look through here, let's see, there's one called History. Sounds good. And you look at the uh, endpoint URL and there's a spot for a date. Okay, so that's year, month, and date. So if we copy this and paste it in here, change our date, say January 1st, 2015. You notice we get another JSON response, but it looks a little bit different. Okay, so it looks like there's a, um, a dictionary called history and it contains a bunch of values and it looks like it contains some information here different uh, wind speeds things like that if we keep going we'll notice okay so this is 1 156 a.m. 256 a.m. 3.56 a.m. So what it looks like, Weather Underground, is reporting, when you call a, a particular date in history, it gives you the hourly details. And underneath that is all of the, the variables, you know, the weather variables for that particular time. So this is good. So we could actually use this information to give us uh, quite a few data points right so we can literally go through the entire day and get what we're looking for here so this is a good place to start for sure and that's what we'll do so we'll try to find a way to navigate through this and get a bunch of values for uh, temperature whatever it is and that'll be our next step